worry about your character, not your reputation. Your character is what you are. Your reputation is what people think you are. This is the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. If it's your first time joining me, thank you and welcome. You can subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and Rumble. If you don't find us on any of those, any particular podcast network, just let me know. I'll make sure we get listed on there soon. This show is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands, that's right, thousands of audiobooks completely free for 30 days. Sign up right now at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. Worry about your character, not your reputation. Your character is what you are. Your reputation is what people think you are. We will move into discussion time after we talk about the topic for a little bit. I do monitor the live chat during the show. What's interesting about this quote, and it was a very popular one. Actually, I really like it. I'm not sure where the quote came from, but we do uh, post these on my Facebook page. And based upon the feedback from the community, it determines the topic for the show. But this quote deals with an issue that seems to be completely lost on our culture at the moment, at this moment in history, at least on a chunk of our culture, not the whole culture. Of course, I don't want to make broad generalizations, (laughs) but it does seem to be fading fast. I think social media contributes to this a lot, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. But worrying about your character is the first part that we're going to talk about character. Have you even stopped to think about what your character looks like? I'm actually going to look up the definition of character because I want to make sure that I describe this. Here we go. I love it. It's a great definition. Character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual distinctive to you as an individual similar is personality disposition temperament that's a great definition we're gonna we're gonna roll with that one this morning your character is who you are as an individual and we can focus on who we are as individuals Or, as suggested in the quote, we can focus on what people think we are as individuals. At the root of this is, how honest are we with ourselves? Do we pay attention to ourselves and the kind of people we are, kind of person we are? How do you define yourself? This obviously requires a tremendous amount of attention and focus on yourself. And I don't mean in a narcissistic sense. I mean in a just observable behavioral sense. Character traits may include the level of honesty you have, the level of integrity you have, the level of ethics, moral compass, moral drive, Consistency. Generally, when you're talking about character, you're talking about positive character traits. But our character obviously will also have weaknesses. I mean, we all have them. So we all have our our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. The biggest trap or one of the biggest traps we can fall into, I believe, is not having our own inner definition of a person of good character or what a person of good character would be. And so we let society, culture, or friendships or relationships define that for us. 
And the reason I believe this is a very, very dangerous trap is first, I've fallen into it for years. And second of all, it generates an unrealistic definition of who we think we should be. It's unrealistic for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons is nobody knows who we are. (laughs) So allowing anything external to define us, even in a little sense, kind of gives too much power to things that are, are not associated with us. Now, I'm not saying we don't value people's feedback, of course. But we don't. We cannot let externalities define who we are. This is a very, very dangerous road to go down. You find yourself in a situation where you just can't seem to make somebody else happy. Whether that's a friend, a family, loved one, partner, spouse. Are you putting other people... In a position of feeling like they can't make you happy. Are you trying to control somebody? Are you trying to define who they should be and who they who who you want them to be, rather than accepting them for who they are? There's two different boundary elements here. You can want what's best for somebody else, support and love them. And still love them for who they are. You can assist them in being the best version of themselves. But that's supposed to be a partnership, not a dictatorship. The power dynamic between you and a loved one or you and a friend or you and a complete stranger should be that of or should aim to be that of a partnership, not a dictatorship. And that's a two-way street. They shouldn't be dictating who you should be, and you should not be dictating who they should be. But you should both be able to mutually agree that you want what's best for each other, and you want each other to be the best version of each other. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to cultivate this kind of relationship. But a lot of times, it's good to have something to aim for. Our character is who we are as individuals. So that first part of that quote where it says, worry about your character, not your reputation. It's worry about who you are as an individual because your character is what you are and your reputation is what people think you are. And with social media and the invention of broadcasting every small detail of our lives, there is a significant temptation to painting a picture of ourselves and dedicating a tremendous amount of time propping ourselves up to complete strangers so that we can cultivate a reputation so we can be fake. If we are... Letting externalities define who we are, that's actually normal. So I'm not judging you. Trust me. Like I said earlier in the episode, I've I've gone down this road. I went down it for quite a while in which I needed validation from other people in order to feel good about myself. The reason this is dangerous is because people are generally not, I shouldn't say people generally. The reason this is dangerous is because there is a small group of people who will take advantage of people who have this weakness. If you're the kind of person who defines themselves based upon what other people think and feel, you will find yourself eventually trapped in a relationship where somebody takes full advantage, whether knowingly or unknowingly, of you needing their approval in order to function. It becomes a unhealthy power dynamic in a relationship or a friendship, or it can be. They may not do it all the time. 
but it does leave us vulnerable. It's kind of easy to pick up on, on the people who thrive on this is whether they guilt you into things, whether they apply emotional pressure on you to change who you are, whether they emotionally extort you or withdraw or withhold. And I mean, we all do this at varying degrees, but obviously if it's a chronic issue in a certain relationship, you need to watch out because in order for you to be able to communicate effectively and be who you are, you do have to a degree of, I don't care what you think. Now, obviously you can take that to an extreme. (laughs) It's not good to not care what everybody thinks all the time because people do have things of value to tell us, especially about ourselves, because we're so, we've got a massive blind spot when it comes to our character. But we do have to have a degree of, I don't care what you think. We need to, but that has to kind of cultivate from what this this is talking about, where it it has to come from our inner understanding of our own character and who we are. If we are not confident in our, strengths and weaknesses and we don't understand them then when somebody pushes us down because of a weakness or props us up because of a strength it becomes it can become like addictive or repulsive and we can begin to hate ourselves or or love ourselves too much because we're allowing that outside influence to prop us up so much or knock us down so much And there's a few strategies we can we can take in order to help cultivate this character thing. But before I move into that, this show is brought to you by Amazon Audible. If you're like me and you love reading but don't have the time, then Audible audiobooks may be the perfect solution for you. With Audible, listening is the new reading. You can pop in your earbuds and discover that next exciting adventure or expand your knowledge from any PC, Mac, Android, Alexa, or Apple device. And check this out. Because you listen to this show, for a limited time, you can get instant access to thousands of audiobooks from Audible's Premium Plus catalog completely free. Just visit audible.wisdomworthknowing.org right now and take advantage of a free 30-day trial. That's right. For 30 days, you'll get full access to Audible's Premium Plus catalog as well as an additional free title of your choosing. If you discover audiobooks aren't for you, no problem. You can cancel instantly online. That's it. It's that simple. Two years ago, audiobooks began to change my life, and they may change yours too. Pause this podcast and head over to Audible, that's A-U-D-I-B-L-E, dot wisdomworthknowing, dot org, and sign up right now. So how can we cultivate this character? Well, we talked about it in a, a quite a few previous episodes. Um, episode a, a few episodes ago, the Be Alone, Take the Time to Love and Understand Who You Really Are was talked about this topic pretty in depth. But we really need to, to sit down and self-journaling, writing down, really just kind of thinking about and visualizing what we think a person of good character is or what we look like as a person of good character, accepting both our strengths and our limitations, being realistic about our expectations and heading on a general path to become better people. This is a tremendously time-consuming process. And if we do it well, then we really don't have time to look at other people's and people and judge them. Because most of us, if not all of us, unless you are a special kind of human being, have a tremendous amount of work to do on making ourselves better people. This includes me. I'm 37 years old, and I easily have a laundry list of problems and self-weaknesses that need to be worked on or addressed on a daily basis. This, this is not supposed to be a self-loathing thing. It's mostly just a self-awareness thing. Like it says, worry about your character, not your reputation. If you stop focusing on other people, Just try this for a week. 
and you sat down and you wrote down a list of things that you do well and a list of things you don't do so well, and then you focus on the not so well part of your character and you say, okay, well, how can I work on, or let's pick one. I'm going to pick one this week and I'm trying to be a little better at it than I was today. You will find that it takes a tremendous amount of time, effort, and energy just to address one of the items on that list. By the way, don't try to take them all on at once. Not generally a wise decision. The point being is if we do this well, we will stop judging other people. We'll actually start to understand people better. Especially if we're trying to be better ourselves and we realize how difficult and hard it is to be better versions of ourselves. It is a lot easier to be compassionate for other people who are just trying to be the better version of themselves today. And it's easy to see them in those moments of weakness because you're like, yeah, it's not easy to be decent. (laughs) It's just not. But the important thing is, is when you begin to kind of this, this, you start to have this better feedback loop in which you are kind of reflective of yourself. It's a loop in which you have control over rather than allowing for the dispositions of other people to define that for you. You'll find that you don't need other people in order to be a decent person or to develop character. You don't need their approval. You don't need their validation. You don't need their acceptance of you. Their approval, validation, and acceptance of you actually becomes more rewarding because it's not something you need. It's a bonus. It's not something you are, like, desperately trying to obtain. When they do tell you you do something well, you accept it as a compliment. I believe this is the healthy dynamic in relationships. Obviously, I fail at this tremendously. I do value or overvalue what people think of me quite often. But, you know, just with anything else we talk about on the show, we should aim to be the type of people who don't require other people's approval in order to function. And we also shouldn't be in relationships. I shouldn't say be in relationships. We shouldn't set our relationships up so that others require our approval or validation for them to be better people. Do you do that to people? Do you force them into a position in which their behavior has to conform to your expectations in order for them to be happy? That's not a healthy relationship dynamic. People need to be responsible for themselves. They can only be responsible for themselves. If you're creating a power dynamic between you and others in which you need each other's approval in order to function, that's called codependency. It's not a good thing. If you're struggling with this, by the way, it's just a struggle. It's not something that is evil. It's just something people struggle with for a wide array of reasons. Reasons. I do, I do suggest the book um, Codependency No More. Uh, another one that's great on the subject is Boundaries. I've brought that up several times in the book. Keep Your Love On by Danny Silk. And that's just to name a few. Mutual respect and love usually requires a mutual understanding that you cannot change the other person. And I've been married for 15 years. So by the way, me and my wife went through this entire phase the first 10 years of our marriage where we had an idea in our head of how our spouse should be, and I still struggle with it to a degree, and I'm sure she does too, can't speak for her. And so then we would literally manipulate each other into trying to get each other to conform into our expectations. This is not good for relationships, just so you know. As you can imagine, it causes a tremendous amount of instability and unhappiness. (laughs) And I don't really think it was until we both kind of started to accept each other, including weaknesses or who we were, that we actually started to love each other better. And we obviously still want what's best for each other. And and the hard part about that is watching each other make mistakes. 
we may actually know because they've told us what they where they want to be but we also have to give them room and grace to breathe and learn their own mistakes or learn each other's mistakes so that we can dr- grow and it's hard seeing somebody you love make decisions that hurt themselves in a day in day out process my wife watches me do it i watch her do it we give each other feedback occasionally hopefully tactfully when those situations arise we try to encourage each other to be better versions of ourselves but the the, the most dangerous thing we can do is apply pressure coercion emotional extortion to force the other person to be something they're not this is a very very difficult thing to do it requires tremendous communication understanding grace it le- there's a lot of fights arguments and it's hard to do but we do love each other better than we did then when we were constantly trying to manipulate each other even on a small scale it was toxic for us and and when we do fall into that trap now which we still do i think we're better at it now than we used to be when we do fall into that trap it is still bad for us because even what our spouse thinks of us that's us focusing on our reputation it doesn't just have to be what complete strangers think or what our family thinks of us that's our reputation We need to worry about our character, though, not our reputation, because our character is what we are. We live with ourselves more than anybody else. So we need to focus on what that part of ourselves is. Our reputation is what other, that's friends, family, loved ones, think of us. And while it is valuable to have some appreciation for what other people think, they don't really know us the way we know us. And so... Only we really know what it is we can focus on. This show is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks completely free for 30 days. Sign up right now at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. You've been listening to the Wisdom Worth Knowing live stream podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video on all of your favorite social networks. We are on YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble. Liking and sharing actually helps the algorithms bump us up on the viewership a little bit, so make sure you do that. You can also follow us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. If we aren't on a certain podcast network, please let me know. You can ping me on Twitter or Facebook, and I will do my best to get it posted there. I want to thank you for joining me today. Until tomorrow, remember, worry about your character, not your reputation. Your character is what you are. Your reputation is what people think you are. Let's focus on being the best version of ourselves we can today because that is pretty much all we can do. Have a great day.